All right, so I'm gonna do um, a few short poems and a few longer poems, and I'm gonna warn you when the shorter poems come, because I find it helps people sort of apportion their attention span accordingly, so. <laughs> <clears throat> so this first one is a short one, and I'm, I sort of brought it out because it's political season. <clears throat> this is called, and of course it deals with the moon, this is called A, a Political Moon. <clears throat> Walking the dogs at night, shoulder muscles roped, brow knotted, politics on my brain has me looking at the ground instead of the stars. This last goddamn war has already made me miss three whole phases of the moon. <laughs> now we've got a little bit of a longer one. This one was actually written for the occasion. This was written for, for this evening um, and our theme. This is called Serenade for a Misfit Moon. <clears throat> the sun shines on the lawful, the abiders, who would rather serve under the sun, walk the clear, well-lit path, lined with nodding pink geraniums, then live free under the moon, pick their careful way over roots and rocks, attend to every shadow, every splash of soft light. The sun shines for the lucky, the fast-tracked, the favored, but it's the moon for the disinherited, the misbegotten, and the misfits. Father Sun beats them with the fierce beams of his eyes when he catches them, burns them with hot words, and slams them with hammering fists that shoot out like solar flares. So they avoid, they stay away by day, tuck into dark places, tiptoe past into their rooms where they blast him away in earphones with music that screeches and bangs. Mother Moon waits up. Mother Moon who soothes. Once Father Son roared and blazed and Mother Moon slipped between to protect them with her cold disc. Father Son rained blows on her back, and when they dared to peek, even eclipsed the violence, scored their retinas, so they staggered, half blinded for weeks. The sun grows food for the body. Sunlight shapes the grapes for our wine, knits the dark kale, pours the juice into our ripe red strawberries. Look under the midday sun for the farmer who wipes streams of sweat from his brow with his hat, then slaps it against his thigh. It's the moon that grows poems, revelations, spells and songs, cultivates the fungal nourishment for souls. March along moon-plowed furrows of the fecund dark to find the poet, elbows deep in the rich loam of night, where he kneads the stubborn clumps of words, sifts their grains between his fingers, plants and tends the seeds and shoots of leafy green sonnets and brambling free verse. Trace out the nocturnal latitudes to find the philosopher as he sails his ship in a skull-shaped bottle past the borders of the known and off the map's edge night of the world. Follow the flight paths of night birds to find the songwriter in the fairy grove, where her fingers search out on the silver strings of starlight, her serenade to the sliver moon. 
to conjure your own spells, decant your own personal incantations, simply run your fingers along the contours of the moon and open your ears to her faintest sighs and gasps. Yes, almost. <laughs> yes, the sun shines on the scions, the powers, the cocks of the walk, who strut and squawk, chests puffed out and chins angled toward the luxury box seats. <clears throat> but it's the moon that gently throbs in concave chests. It's the moon for the rest of us. Um, <clears throat> this is another short one. Um, nevertheless, you might want to fasten your seatbelts for this one. This is called um, <clears throat> Making Love in the Blood of Her Moon. <laughs> She's cramping, so I massage her belly, but oh, my hand strays lower. In lovemaking, she brings finger to mouth, leaves a red crescent. Drawn out, my shaft is bright, my base is dark with glory red. Another longer one here. This is called <clears throat> Talking the Ears Off the Stars. I have this house with a roof that leaks. I have this yard that's gently eroding into the street. I have this house that I don't really own, won't really own for 35 years, long past my retirement, long past my ability to pay. <laughs> I have this house that some bank could yank out from under me like a slapstick carpet any time they want in the next 35 years. But while I am here, I intend to sit in my chair and read my books. I intend to drink beer under the stars on my patio and talk into the wee hours, talk the ears off the stars, talk until the moon nods and droops below the tree line, until the words spill into the street and find their rivulet byways into the L.A. River and perhaps at last into the sea. <laughs> I intend to pick my way up the outdoor staircase and piss outside in the dark down into my gully. <laughs> I intend to evoke the possessive, my, over all these things until and unless the law slams shut on my fingers. I intend to crawl into bed far too late and nuzzle my sleeping wife, be nuzzled by my sleeping dogs, only to be tickled awake before dawn by the whiskers of my cat on my face, <laughs> to rise once more in this place, this decaying, beautiful place, this place where I have stopped for a while in my hasty spin around this toppling, wobbly globe, through this fishtail firmament, through my lifetime's brief blink of the universal eye. We have another quick short one. This is, um, is everybody here ever seen the moon in the morning in the sky? This is about that. This is called Full Morning Moonset. Ripe orange, white, and round, it slides right down sky and snuggles between mountains. On morning patio, I sip my coffee. Full Morning Moonset over Elysian Park.
One more quickie. Um, the, the title and some of the imagery here comes from that phenomenon when you're in front of the ocean on a night that it's so dark that you can't tell where the ocean ends and the sky begins. Has everybody seen that? Um, <clears throat> I also feel somewhat secure in saying this is probably one of the best poems of its type in the world. <laughs> <clears throat> Simply because it's an iambic pentameter sonnet about an acid trip, and I don't know that the category... <laughs> I don't know if there's a lot of competition. So this is, um, this is called End Sea Begin Sky. End Sea Begin Sky. We hike the moonlit crooked path on down. Bear of a forest hulks behind our backs. Lights of San Francisco teeter in stacks that perch atop the ocean like a crown. The Crescent San Francisco arcs aloft, stretches into the middle of the sky, weaves into the when of where and why, blends into the sharp of dark and soft. Can't tell where splash of patterned urban light quite bleeds into the spray of stars like dust or feeds into the vision-craving lust of laughing, psychedelic, starry nights. If this is what it always was to be, then this will be enough for even me. Thank you.